Well, hey there, everyone. My name is Jared, and I sort of have a thing for remakes, but it seems to me the definition of that word has been warped over the years, and now it's come to mean something totally different. Nowadays, I get the feeling people want remakes to provide a wholly different experience to the original, which to me feels like a reimagining. And really, both of those ideas have their value, but I think it's the difference between the two that's the important thing here. But don't worry, we're not about to jump down that rabbit hole. I just bring that up to let you guys know I tend to have very specific expectations when that word gets thrown around. And given the fact that the games industry has a tendency towards mishandling these sorts of situations, as you could imagine, when I heard about the new Dead Space remake, I was a little anxious. Of course, it didn't help that I tend to go radio silent when something I'm interested in is being worked on, so I didn't exactly keep up with the game's development. But when I would hear the odd rumor about all the alterations that were going to be made, I came close to writing the whole thing off. I really mean it when I say I loved the first Dead Space game, and without a doubt, I am not alone. This was an important release to a lot of people, and my fear was that it wouldn't be treated with the respect that entails. And, well, I guess we should get into whether or not those fears were justified. Ladies, gentlemen, I'm Jared from Avalanche Reviews, and after a very long absence, welcome back to the Dead Space Retrospective. Alright, so before we get into this thing, we've got to do something I really and truly hate. If you haven't heard, as of lately, YouTube has started cracking down on anything that isn't a squeaky clean Minecraft playthrough. Bad words, gore, adult situations, essentially if you can't talk about it at church, YouTube's not going to put ads on it because apparently we're all six-year-olds. As you can imagine, for someone who covers a lot of horror content, I have had several recent videos get hit with ad limited and 18 plus status. And for a guy who pays his rent with ad revenue, that is incredibly worrying. For those of you that don't know, YouTube flat out will not promote content it can't financially benefit from. So even people subscribed to my channel may not get videos I put out unless YouTube can run ads on them. It's not good, and if I'm being totally honest with you, it's a bit of a scary time for me. So I've got to be that guy and ask that any of you who are able or lucky enough to be in a position to help think about checking out my Patreon or clicking that join button by the video. As a supporter, you can jump into my Discord server, get access to videos early, and use these cute little emotes. I would truly love to offer you guys more, but it means a lot to me that none of my content gets stuck behind any sort of paywall. These videos will always, and I really do mean always, be free for everyone. And if you can't afford to help out, I don't want you to feel like you're missing out on anything. I know that's an awful sales pitch, but I'll be upfront with you. Your support simply allows this content to continue to exist here on YouTube. For a majority of the time, it's you guys that keeps me afloat when ad revenue doesn't, but more importantly, it's you guys that make sure that I get to continue making the videos that I want to make and not the ones guaranteed to make the most amount of money. Just picking a random example out of thin air, how about a hypothetical where I take so long making sure a Dead Space remake video fits my level of quality that I end up overshooting the window where it'd be financially viable to release. <laughs> I'm really bad at my job, guys. In all seriousness though, YouTube first and foremost is a creative outlet for me, and while it's incredible that it pays the bills, I refuse to let that dictate what I create here. So at least until YouTube stops hammering its content creators into the dirt, I gotta be a jerk and ask for a little help with that. I appreciate you guys hearing me out on this, and I'll have links to my support platforms in the description. Thank you all very much for making the last decade of my life unbelievably fun, and here's hoping we can squeeze several more out of this company before it goes belly up. Okay, so let's get back to the real reason you're here. Room temperature takes and way too much of a focus on technical elements that no one really cares about. Yeah. <laughs> 
besides the fact that I seem to have no control over doing it in every other video I put out, it's actually fitting that I mention the Resident Evil remake at the start there, because it's the relatively recent success of RE2 and 3 that really pushed EA to greenlight a Dead Space remake in the first place. Like any other situation with the company, EA's not going to take a step unless it's sure that it's in the direction of millions of dollars or the possibility that they can shut down a smaller studio. Getting back on track though, this remake was helmed by a studio called Motive and that sort of took me by surprise. It seemed weird that EA would put such a big responsibility on the shoulders of a group that had maybe one or two releases under its belt at the time. And without ruining the rest of the video, I can say they more than outdid themselves, or at the very least things went way better than they could have for a developer so seemingly wet behind the ears in industry terms. During development, it seemed like all of the expected elements were focused on, with Motive making sure they strove to accurately recreate the original stellar sound design and graphics that, if I'm being honest, still impress today. All in all, I'd say this is one of the better scenarios you could have hoped for, if anything because one of the first orders of business after its announcement was to confirm there would be no microtransactions included. Listen, I know they've been dead for a long time now, but do keep in mind the producer we're dealing with here. I'm sure bringing them back was not an off-the-table sort of issue. This being a remake and all, I feel like we probably don't need to dive in very deep as far as the story goes, but it wouldn't feel right if we didn't at least cover the key points. In the Dead Space remake, and the Dead Space original I guess, you play as Isaac Clarke an engineer assigned to a team that's been dispatched thanks to a distress call from the USG Ishimura. In Dead Space's universe, resource mining has been revolutionized by the process of planet cracking, which sees whole chunks of the planet being lifted out of orbit so they can be processed for minerals. The Ishimura was in the process of doing just that when things sort of went radio silent. So the powers that be sent out a team to see what the hell happened and Isaac jumped at the chance to be involved since his girlfriend is stationed on the aging planet cracker and, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. As soon as they get within viewing distance, it's clear no one's behind the wheel and after a hotter landing than they would have liked and maybe five minutes of being on the actual ship, they find out why the place isn't exactly bustling with activity. So the rescue team gets jumped by these human-adjacent monstrosities and in the course of trying to survive, they uncover a pretty wide-reaching and relatively complex conspiracy. See, this world has itself a religion called Unitology, which kicked off after Earth's government came across some kind of an alien artifact. Now, number one, obviously, Altman be praised, and number two, they sort of tied their entire belief system to the thing. For reasons that will become obvious after a few hours of gameplay, Earth's government covered up the fact that this marker even existed and Unitology became a practice of believing it did regardless. I mention all of this because the whole planetary mining thing turned out to be just a smokescreen to get access to planet Aegis 7 and extract what the Unitologists believed to be the or at least one of the markers left behind by said alien race. Shortly after coming into contact with the thing, people aboard the Shimura began acting strange and after it was actually loaded onto the ship, all hell broke loose. People were losing their damn minds and doing all sorts of stuff you probably shouldn't do to your fellow man, but it's when the bodies began piling up when the real issues started. Human corpses were seemingly rising from the grave, transformed into demonic looking killing machines and their victims would suffer a similar fate. The marker was obviously not the religious artifact people believed it to be, and if it was, it's not a religion I think anyone actually wants to be a part of. Make us whole again. Now, normally what I would do here is lay out the major events of the story and then give a brief spoiler warning before talking about how things end, but I've got to assume most of you are already familiar with Dead Space's story, so instead let's talk about how different things are here in the remake. And really, the first thing that's going to jump out at any DS fan is the fact that Isaac is no longer a silent protagonist. I saw it, Hammond. A flying would turn the captain's body into another one of those things. Here in the remake, the guy talks just about as much as any other main character would, and if you're a little put off by that, I can totally understand. Isaac being silent in the first game gave it, I don't know, something special. For someone who describes video games for a living, you'd probably assume this wouldn't happen very much, but genuinely, I don't think I have the right words to describe it. 
The atmosphere just felt so much more rich, and your ability to put yourself in Isaac's gravity-tethered boots was unmatched. It was a very unique selling point at the time, and as the years have gone by, it's something me and a lot of other people have grown to appreciate even more. I would imagine this wouldn't have been such a widely praised move in an action-adventure game or maybe some kind of a cover-based shooter, but with Dead Space's focus on isolating horror, it just felt right. It was the kind of idea that might have made you question how it could work when you first heard it, but in action, I don't think anyone could deny its effect. So all that being said, I've got to say, Isaac actually opening his mouth here in the remake doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would have preferred him continuing his vow of silence, but there are a few reasons I think that trick wouldn't have worked quite so well the second time around. And the obvious first one is, it's something we've already seen before. At the time, having a AAA game abstain from making its main character a machine built solely for the purpose of turning out wisecracks was novel and fresh, but now that we had seen it pulled off perfectly, I doubt it would have hit as hard again. I don't know, it just wouldn't have had the same impact as before in my opinion, but more importantly, we've already seen Isaac's face and heard his voice in the next two entries in the series. I guess timeline-wise, it would make total sense. I mean, this is a retelling of the first story, but as far as we, the audience, are concerned, we would have gone from his more vocal performances back to him being mute again. Of course, you guys know I would rather a more true-to-the-original move here, but what we ended up with definitely didn't ruin things, at least not for me. He still feels like Isaac and his personality tracks with what we've seen from him in parts 2 and 3. So overall, I can definitely understand your worry on that front, and it is noticeably different. I'm just not willing to say that's a bad thing. Keeping right on track, there is a new character here in the remake, and without spoiling anything, I'm pretty sure her inclusion served to lend a little more believability to a late-game revelation. If you already know what that twist is, you probably understand what I mean, but again, this is one of those changes I don't find too intrusive. The major story beats play out almost exactly how they did before, with only minor tweaks made that, in my opinion, leave the core of the tale untouched. Now honestly, I'm not exactly a Dead Space lore fanatic, so I'm sure there were even more changes made to small stuff I didn't even notice, but the point is, while they didn't necessarily leave the story alone per se, it does still have the same effect and get across the same message. I think the best thing I can compare it to, and you're going to hear this a lot by the way, would be Resident Evil Remake. Mikami decided to add extra bits into our remake as far as the story was concerned, but it didn't really matter if you did or did not like those inclusions because you could still engage with the original story roughly in the same exact form you were used to. In both of these cases, I would say that's exactly what you want in a remake. The same exact content you enjoyed in the original only tweaked to such a minute degree that at first glance you wouldn't know anything was changed at all. Sure, very small things may have been altered like what ultimately happens to Hammond, but the end result is the same exact thing. We start and end in the same spots, and the road between the two has been altered by someone with a very light touch. I really can't tell you guys how fresh this is. For a guy like me who appreciates it when remakes are approached with accuracy and original intent in mind, this is like getting struck by lightning at the exact moment you win the lottery. It's so damn rare that I'm almost dumbfounded when it actually does go down, so there's no tap dancing around this issue. This is a big, whatever the opposite of a red flag, it's a green, this is a big green flag. I guarantee you, fans of the original Dead Space can jump straight into this remake, absolutely sure that they're going to get the same killer story they first fell in love with, and if you're smart, that's exactly what you wanted from the get-go. Normally, when you're remaking a beloved game, you've got to walk a pretty thin line. It's a balancing act between making something that fits into the market as it exists today and making sure it plays enough like the original that you don't cause some kind of a mutiny among the fan base. With Dead Space, however, the stress is multiplied by several orders of magnitude. The game flat out blew people away on its original launch and its gameplay was mostly driving that massively positive response. Not only did it mimic RE4's patented over-the-shoulder design, but I think most would agree it surpassed it. The inclusion of limb dismemberment and having that gory mechanic play a huge role in progress and difficulty was a masterstroke. Honestly, Dead Space was a genuine revolution, a combination of already established ideas combined together in a way that it would create something wholly unique and enjoyable. So you could most definitely say Motive had their work cut out for them. 
These guys not only had to accurately recreate what seemed like lightning in a bottle, but add on to it in a way that felt simultaneously meaningful and respectful. And if I'm being honest, I don't think they could have hit that mark any harder than they did. You can actually feel the reverence they had for the way the game used to be played here. You're going to use the same weapons to blast limbs off the same necromorphs in the same locations as you did before, but that's not to say this is a simple rehash. There have been new elements added in here or there, and I genuinely mean it when I say that every single one of them feels like a well thought out, well executed improvement over the OG Dead Space experience. And to those of you who have heard me rant for hours on end about the benefits of total accuracy in remakes, but you know exactly how high that praise is for me. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and lay out a nice baseline. Just like with the story, this is going to be a brief recap because I'm sure a majority of you already know what to expect here. So in Dead Space's original release, there were a number of combined elements that allowed it to work exceedingly well in a market space where single player horror games were supposed to have been dead. A dead space, if you will. In its first showing, Dead Space was a heavily linear experience that had you traversing the narrow halls of the Ishimura, constantly moving on to solve the next threat that you and your fellow survivors were facing. From the ship running out of breathable air to an incoming asteroid storm, there was always a bigger threat than the moment-to-moment -moment encounters with the necromorphs, but that being said, it's not like they weren't an issue that needed to be dealt with. These things defy general shooter instincts by becoming even more dangerous after a successful headshot. So instead of aiming for their brains or center mass, you wanted to get rid of as many extremities as you could. And since dismemberment was far more valuable than getting lead down range, the weapons you would come across would end up not slotting into your normal shooter archetypes. Almost your entire arsenal was geared towards less traditional forms of projectile based combat and that made the game feel unique floating in an ocean of similarly perspective driven shooting games. Outside of combat, even though exploration was largely limited to the exact spot the developers wanted you to be on a moment to moment basis, you could wander just barely off the beaten path to find extra resources and cool extended lore. And speaking of resources, because you know damn well I had to bring this up, some to this day call Dead Space a survival horror game because of the aforementioned resources seemingly being in short supply, but that is flat out not the case. Just like Resident Evil 4, the game is always going to make sure you've got the ammo you need to meet the current threat. Killing enemies and stomping their lifeless and hopefully limbless bodies will net you healing items, extra ammo, and money that could be spent at shops to buy more of both. But even if for some reason you decided not to engage with the shop, the game's systems won't exactly let you go empty. That being said, it's pretty damn good at making sure you're not flush for very long. In fact, the reason most people mistakenly think there's limited resources here is because it does such a great job of stretching out those ammo drops so you don't end up carting around a fully stocked armory with you. Or at least that's how it's supposed to operate. Once you've completed the game just once, you're likely going to know exactly where to shoot every enemy and how you can use the environment to your advantage in order to save on resources. Essentially, after that first playthrough, you're going to be able to bend the game over your knee. But on the plus side, starting the game on a higher difficulty will definitely fix that problem right up for you. And since I already mentioned it, Dead Space was great at giving you more ways to topple the gross enemies trying to kill you than just shooting at them. Utilizing your kinesis module, you can do your best Gordon Freeman impression, grabbing stuff around you and using it to even the odds. Then you've got your zero-g segments that have you plotting jumps from one axis to another using your cute little magnetic booties. There's a lot of variety to be found here, and even though these seem like disparate or even competing ideas, everything just sort of blends in with the whole, leading to one hell of a video game. And Motive, for some unknown reason, willingly volunteered to take on the job of recreating all that. Well, the good news is these guys without a doubt know what they're doing. Every single thing I just mentioned is present and accounted for here in the remake, and a lot of them have been slightly improved on in some form. And since I went ahead and made that bold claim, let's get down in the dirt and do some comparing. Starting off with the least easy to describe, the remake seems to control more snappily than the original. 
I don't really know if snappily is a word. I've said it a few times now and it sounds weird to me. I'm sure you get what I mean though. It just feels more snappy, like the controls are more responsive in the remake. In OG Dead Space, movement could be relatively sluggish, with things like turning speed and general handling feeling just a little slower than I would like. But to be fair, from what I hear, that was on purpose. And that does actually track with other mechanics in the game. Visceral did seem to really focus on the idea that Isaac wasn't a star running back, but just some engineer. And that's fair enough. I mean, it's good to see a dev house sort of latching themselves onto a concept, but whether or not it's on accident or on purpose, if the game doesn't control in a way that feels really responsive, I mean, the end result's the same, right? When I played the two back to back, it made for what I would call undeniable evidence that these factors were heavily improved on, but it's not exactly something I can show you guys in a video. So I guess you guys are just going to have to take my word that things have been changed for the better. I mean, Isaac's not exactly drifting through corners and turning on a dime, but you can definitely tell that a few knobs and sliders were tweaked in the right direction. And continuing on that train of logic, OG Dead Space suffers from an issue that has always been a pain in my luscious, meaty ass. When you end up running out of ammo in a fight, you can't reload while moving. Or to better explain it, you can't initiate a reload unless you are totally still when you hit that button. Now once the reload is started, you can move again, but you can't run. And the problem there is, is that if you're reloading, you aren't attacking, which means you can't trigger a pain state in Necromorph, so you can't halt their approach. Which means you're probably going to want to create some distance so you're not helpless during that reload. And obviously that's something you can't do, or at the very least it requires more steps than I think are necessary. It's not something that's going to make the difference between liking the game and hating it, but instead just ends up being sort of frustrating when you take hits you feel like you shouldn't have. Well, that little issue has been addressed in Dead Space Remake, and I really can't tell you what a difference it makes. Seriously, one of the best adjustments Motive made in my opinion. In both OG and Remake, you're able to use objects from the environment or sharp parts of downed necromorphs as projectiles, and in the harder difficulties, this is going to be a must. I say that because hard mode makes limbs take way more hits to detach, and the amount of ammo isn't necessarily proportionally increased to compensate. So you're going to need to be way more resourceful, and that's a welcome mechanic in my mind. The only issue is how inconsistent this can be on original Dead Space. Everything from those little fan blades to necromorph bones seem to sometimes have an effect and sometimes not. Honestly, it seems to me more often than not, throwing something at an enemy will do absolutely nothing in OG. And I know this because not only does it not cause a pain state in the necromorph, but it remains intact on the ground afterwards instead of breaking on impact like it's supposed to. Over on Remake though, this feels much more solid and reliable. It really is like night and day switching between the two as far as throwing stuff goes. However, I do struggle with an issue on Remake that has me not picking up items with Kinesis that I'm perfectly hovering my cursor over, and I'm not quite sure what's causing that. But the majority of the time that I can get a hold of something, this mechanic feels way more effective here on Remake. Upgrading your equipment feels a little more fun over on Remake as well, with guns and ammo having more little stat bonuses that can be gained at the price of a power node. I also really liked how progress with upgrades can be gated behind special items that can be sometimes paid for at the shop, but the real good stuff is going to be found locked behind the new security clearance doors. These things replace the power node doors from OG Dead Space and incentivize backtracking and, oh by the way, Dead Space has backtracking now. A change that's pretty damn welcome for someone like me. For nearly the entire existence of Dead Space, it has been falsely labeled as a survival horror game by games media, and while there are many factors behind me feeling that way, one of my go-tos has always been its linear format and lack of backtracking, so massive thanks to Motive for going out of their way to make me look dumb on the internet. Much appreciated, guys. Progression through the Ishimura and Remake is still roughly the same, with the ship's layout remaining mostly untouched, barring a few alterations made either to better facilitate exploration or to accommodate the fact that you're now able to freely explore the ship whenever you want. For the first, maybe, hour or so of the game, things basically play out exactly like they did in the original, but after unlocking the tram system, you'll notice you can use it to revisit areas you've already been to. And to incentivize you to do that, they've included the aforementioned rooms locked by security checks. As the story progresses, you'll get higher and higher security clearance, and eventually you can follow a sequence of side objectives leading to a master security clearance. 
As you might imagine, for a guy like me, I thought this was a really good idea. It made the ship feel less like a vehicle for moving me through the story and more like something I could use to progress at my own pace. Just like a Resident Evil title, you get the feeling in Dead Space Remake that things are moving forward because you have gained ground on your own versus the game leading you by the nose through event markers. Or, you know, alien markers. Because it's a Dead Space game. You guys get what I'm saying. <laughs> And as a bit of a side note here, it took me a while to notice that the Ishimura is no longer broken up by traditional loading screens. From the start of the game to the end, it's basically one long, uninterrupted sequence, which is pretty damn cool. Now to be fair, it's still loading in areas and assets exactly like it would during a normal loading screen, it's just doing it while the train's moving or it's being masked behind a cutscene. Still very cool though. Although, if I'm being totally honest, I would assume this little tidbit is what's causing what I would consider to be a very large issue, but we'll get into that later. In Zero-G sections, you're now allowed more free movement like the kind seen in Dead Space 2, which feels so damn right for the game, you might be tricked into thinking it's always been that way. This little inclusion creeps into one of the boss encounters, and while you would assume it would change up the expected dynamic, once again, it just feels right. I mean, it is completely different from a movement perspective, with way more freedom, but it's been tooled so well that it feels exactly like it did before. They did replace the asteroid shooting minigame with one that has you personally tagging each incoming projectile to be shot, and I guess that's okay, but I don't know, I kinda always had fun with the original version of this section. Not exactly something I call an upgrade or a downgrade, but just some kind of a lateral movement. Overall, I feel like difficulty might have been tweaked just a bit, but that's something you likely aren't going to notice on the default medium difficulty. I started Remake Off in this mode, and after about three hours, it was just way too easy for me. Something that, uh, doesn't happen to me very often. But this new mod seems to help out with that, which is good. Uh, do you guys want to replay that entire first? <laughs> Son of a bitch. But I guess that is sort of expected. I had only just recently beat the original before I started up Remake, and once you wrap your mind around how combat works in either game, it can be really easy to make the most efficient choices without a lot of conscious thought. On top of that, I already knew where all the tricks and surprises would appear roughly, so I didn't get caught with my pants down as much as a new player might. So I restarted the game and set it to hard mode, which is satisfyingly more difficult by comparison. The first hour was more comfortable, but eventually I noticed my ammo was in near constant danger of being depleted. I had to utilize environmental elements like explosives and projectiles way more often, and eventually fights became a 50-50 mix of me shooting guns and throwing stuff at enemies. I'm really happy to say there were more than a few sections of Remake that had me nearly completely dry on ammo and healing items. Compare that to OG Dead Space where I recently streamed a plasma cutter only hard mode run that was anything but difficult. So if you are even remotely familiar with the original game, trust me, just don't play this on normal. It's going to be a cakewalk for you. I think when you're making something like Dead Space Remake, it can be very easy to fall down a very steep and very slippery slope. In the spirit of improving things, you can sometimes completely alter how the game works, making it feel so different from the original that it loses a bit of that magic that made people fall in love with it in the first place. Well, in my mind, this is the brand new benchmark for not going down that path. You know, I often bring up Resident Evil Remake in my videos, especially when ranting about this specific subject, and that's because it's not only, in my opinion, a perfect example of how you correctly remake a beloved property, but that's also a sentiment shared by a vast majority of people who have played it. And believe me, a large group of people actually agreeing with my perspective is an event so rare, it's worth pointing out. But I bring that up because I genuinely think Dead Space Remake is Resident Evil Remake's perfect analog in the AAA modern gaming scene. The effort that these guys put into conserving the spirit and overall form of Dead Space is present in nearly every single screen of the game. There have been alterations made and the core gameplay has been tweaked with updates and improvements, but no one could argue this doesn't feel like Dead Space 1. And if you didn't know already, Dead Space 1 felt amazing. 
I know I've already driven this point home a few times, but this project could have easily gone in a different direction. The industry does tend to look down on accurate remakes like this, and there's no doubt in my mind Motive was pressured from all sides to do more. Luckily though, they didn't, which means this remake is every single bit as amazing as the original, if not better. What I'm about to say tends to be a very rough distinction to make, but honestly, I think this is one of the rare situations where a remake essentially supplants the original. Alright listen, that first Dead Space game is still incredible and I'm not trying to say it's been made to look lesser because of this remake, but since DSR is so close to that original release while also offering the benefits gained over the course of two console generations, I don't know, I think of this more as a retail price improvement patch. Better visuals, tighter gameplay, improved exploration, and more interactive environments. It's genuinely a zero negatives type of scenario. If you ask me, Dead Space Remake is now the game to point to when loudly proclaiming this. This right here is how it's done. Dead Space's presentation is a bit of a complicated subject. On one end, it would be really easy to say, well, it looks a hell of a lot better than the original. And to be fair, there's no doubt that it does, but there's a lot more going on here. And while some of it is just the interesting stuff I like to get into anyways, the rest is, well, like I said, it's complicated. If it's been a while since you played that original Dead Space release, it might surprise you to find out that that game still impresses today, even when held up to modern titles, and I think a big portion of why that is rests on the shoulders of two major factors. For one, Visceral most definitely understood how to squeeze more detail and performance out of the hardware of the day than arguably anyone else, but more importantly, I think it's because of a huge emphasis on lighting. Now it might be easy for you not to notice the game's killer real-time lighting in the middle of a heated disagreement with some local necromorphs, but a lot of that game is spent moving from one area to the next with nary a confrontation in sight. And during those treks, you'll have ample time to look around at some of the most impressive lights and shadow casting of that console era. With a combination of traditional colored light maps and real-time variations, this game still oozes an amazingly convincing style, but more importantly, the emphasis on these factors, in my mind, makes this game's presentation age much more gracefully than other games released alongside it. Now, if you look at it a little closer with a modern perspective, it might seem sort of flat lighting-wise, in the sense that there aren't a lot of reflections on materials that probably would reflect light, but truly, you just didn't get better than this at the time. It was an atmospheric orgasm just walking down an empty hallway in this game, and in that sense, Remake does a hell of a job of picking up that torch and running with it at full speed. Lighting in DSR is... Well, it's just absolutely insane. It behaves incredibly believably, and light sources are placed with a real eye for scene design. Just like the gameplay elements, this is one area from the original that was transplanted intact, spiritually speaking, and then improved on with all of the expected modern trappings. You know, a lot of the time with these kind of remakes, you can tell new tech and resources went into improving things, but the spirit of the original gets altered in the process. Well, I can assure you that was not done here. Remake is a one-to-one -one analog of the original in every conceivable way, and where there have been improvements, they've been made in a way that keeps that original Dead Space look exactly how you remembered it. I think that's really important for a remake like this, and this release deserves a hell of a lot of praise for its efforts to accurately recreate that iconic presentation style. But that being said, I do have a few non-praise related comments to make here. These aren't exactly complaints or anything, just stuff that I noticed that I thought was interesting. Number one being, this is an unbelievably dark game compared to OG Dead Space on default brightness. I mean, they were definitely going for dark in that first release, but DSR is orders of magnitude darker, and honestly, I kind of like that. So what's the trade-off here? Well, you're going to need a display with great black performance to get the most out of this or else it's going to look like a mess and subjectively, it's not exactly great for making a YouTube video that needs to be visible for people watching on their phones. Phones that might be, I don't know, outside in direct sunlight. But I will say this, seeing these inky black environments on your own display, one that's good enough to show them correctly, in a dark room, it is a religious experience, and that's something developers do tend to shy away from nowadays. 
I mean, sure, a really dark horror game, in theory, is a really good thing, but you do sort of want people to be able to see the game you've spent millions of dollars making for them. However, I think there's a better reason for this. Because lighting here performs so much more realistically than in the original, they might have made the game darker just to better show that off. I mean, think about it. Where's a good lighting engine going to shine best? In a well-lit environment or a dark room with a single light source? Regardless of the reasoning, though, I think this was a good move, but realistically, it is something that needs to be seen in optimal conditions for it to have the intended effect. I also noticed a pretty big change in the color temperature here in Remake. Dead Space OG seemed to prefer a space somewhere in between gold and rust brown for most areas. You would find the odd room with more of a blue greenish tint, but most of the time the game looked like, well now that I'm thinking about it color temperature wise, it looked a lot like the movie Sunshine. Here in the remake, colors do tend to lean towards cool blues, greens, and light oranges. You're still going to see that kind of gold theme in some of the lighting, but the intensity has definitely been reduced. If you look at both games' introductions back to back, you can see how much DSR has toned things down. If I'm being honest though, I think sometimes that's to the remake's detriment. For me, this scene right here in the original always stood out in my mind as a really impressive and memorable spot, specifically because of how great it was lit, but here in the remake, it's lost a lot of that flair I liked so much. I do recognize the reason behind this was to make the light look more realistic and natural, and I do appreciate that 99% of the time, but there are moments where I think the more artificially tweaked, colored lighting from the original looks more stylistically impressive. I can, however, admit that the more dark areas in the remake pop much more because of this move, so in the end, I can call it an overall victory. Moving on to another change, faces have been altered from their original look, and I might be leaning a little more negative on this one. Faces in the original were a little simplistic and, I guess, smooth, for lack of a better word, and there's no doubt there are more details in remakes' faces, but sometimes more detail doesn't exactly equal more visually attractive. And I think a lot of people would agree that Nicole got hit hardest by this move. With the rest of the cast, you could argue they're just different looking and not necessarily better or worse, but it seems odd that Nicole got aged up a good 10-12 to 12 years of hard construction work, but Hammond seemingly regressed to his late 20s. And listen, I know there's a lot of controversy tied to this subject, and I'm not saying every single character in every game needs to be a swimsuit model, but it does seem odd to take someone that most people would agree was an okay looker and turn them into a 48-year-old mother of four. Had she have looked somewhere near this in the original, I could see a little creative freedom getting exercised here, but I don't know, it's just a weird move for me. It's not exactly something that's going to ruin a playthrough for you or anything, but every once in a while when she's on screen, you're going to remember for a second that someone looked at the OG Nicole and said, well, no one's going to believe this woman's real unless she looks like her college-aged children have to teach her how to use her iPhone. But moving on to something that people will actually care about, I am happy to announce Motive definitely understood the importance of the original's focus on immersive heads-up displays. Having all of the on-screen info come from things that both the player and Isaac can see makes all this stuff feel much more like it belongs in the world and less like some high score text placed in the corner of the screen reminding you you're playing a video game. And to be honest with you, that idea right there, that accurate recreation of the original's diegetic HUD, that's about the gist for every single element of this game's presentation. Take any concept from Dead Space and imagine it getting improved in every conceivable way while still staying recognizably true to the original, then that's essentially what we have here. Truly, that's something worth really getting excited over. I mean, every single screen of this game is OG Dead Space, but with the details and lighting cranked to the extreme. The walls, ceilings, and even Isaac's suit, they're exactly how you remember them. They're just more believably detailed now, with little wires and metallic seams. There's just more geometric intricacy to everything you see. Where there might have been a flat, simple wall in OG Dead Space, Remake shows one with several overlapping panels that all seem to exist in 3D space. Without a doubt, this game is a jaw-dropper almost the entire time you're playing it. But you might have noticed I said almost there. Yeah, there's some definite downsides to consider, and while this is an otherwise amazing picture, I just wouldn't be me if I didn't tear into them in excruciating detail, right?
Now, like I said before, this game is incredible looking, but one of my first issues is the toll that that level of fidelity can have on performance. And yes, this is most definitely a rant you've already heard if you've watched my video on the Callisto Protocol, but that's because this problem has sort of embedded itself into the ethos of game development nowadays. I ran this game on what I would consider a relatively high-end PC, a Ryzen 3900 overclock, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 3080 Ti. Of course, you could definitely do better with modern offerings and a lot more money, but this is still well within the realm of being competitive. And I mention all this not to brag, but because Dead Space just flat out could not touch 60 FPS at 4K on the lowest settings possible using this machine. And I get that these guys were likely targeting the more recent 4000 series Nvidia cards while developing this game, but I mean, come on. The lowest setting the game allows should not still result in sub 60 FPS gameplay on an enthusiast level card. Hard. So what's the issue here? Well, Motive and seemingly everyone else in the industry seems to think it's okay to develop games that can't technically run on modern hardware without the help of dynamic resolution scaling, or specifically NVIDIA's DLSS. And for those of you unfamiliar with the term, it's when a GPU or console dynamically lowers the internal render resolution of a game and uses a deep learning AI to upscale that image after the fact. Now to be fair, this is a great technique that can allow people with lower end hardware to be able to run games more smoothly while enjoying some of the aspects of higher res gaming. But the problem is, it's not limited to just that use case. And if you've been paying attention to modern games, you'll know that DLSS is flat out necessary for acceptable frame rates at native 4K even on high end platforms. And hey, maybe that's something you're willing to live with, but believe me when I say this is by no means a perfect process. Every instance of DLSS I've come into contact with causes a noticeable level of softness that just bothers the hell out of me. And if that's not enough, you're also going to see crawling edges that aren't present at native resolution. Now if that's where the complaint stopped, I'd be a little less angry, but DLSS also causes very obvious trails or ghosting when the camera's in motion, and I assume this comes from the GPU not being able to do its calculations exactly in step with the rate at which frames are being output. This ghosting is always going to be present when using DLSS, no matter what level it's set to, and it's most noticeable in dark scenes with a lot of fog, an issue that can be damning in a game whose setting is essentially one long, dark, foggy hallway. Oh, and by the way, these examples were captured with the motion blur turned off, in case you were wondering. Listen, you absolutely are not going to find a bigger graphic snob than me. I want games looking their best for sure, but it is flat out not worth it if that comes at the cost of acceptable performance on high-end hardware. And what I mean by that is, developers should not be targeting performance that technically can't be achieved on current graphics platforms without the help of having the internal render resolution. It's like setting finish times in a foot race based on a guy that drove his car through the course. And keeping on that same point, when the game first launched, it was strapped with incredibly aggressive VRS or variable rate shading, which crushes details in dark or far off textures to the point of honest hilarity. Luckily, an update would eventually come out that would allow PC players to disable VRS, but with zero performance penalty I've been able to find, I'm left wondering why the hell it was on by default in the first place. Now to be fair, a lot of this rant was written back when DLSS and VRS combined for an objectively ugly picture and, like I said before, was completely necessary for the game to hit playable frame rates. Since that update, I found a mix of low to high settings along with the least aggressive DLSS mode that keeps me at a relatively locked 60 FPS, but the downsides of DLSS are still very noticeable. Stepping outside of performance for a bit, I noticed the draw distance for physics objects was pretty shallow, causing things to pop in and out of existence in some scenarios. Not exactly a huge deal, because the game doesn't include a lot of long, straight lines for you to walk, but when you do, you might see some strange stuff going on off in the distance. Sadly, Dead Space doesn't take advantage of ray traced reflections, instead opting for my arch nemesis screen space reflections, and, well, they look about as bad as they always do. Using this method, it's common for 3D models in the line of a reflection to cancel out everything that's supposed to be cast behind it, which always looks really nice, and if you're looking at them at certain angles, they'll just disappear. If you ask me, SSR has always been a grainy, low-res, terrible-looking way to get reflections, so as usual, I would recommend keeping SSR turned off. The resulting image is still going to have environmental reflections, you just won't have to look at this mess anymore. And admittedly, all of this stuff so far has been a royal pain in my ass, but it pales in comparison to the next problem. 
Dead Space, just like Callisto Protocol, has a massive issue with persistent stutter. At first, I thought it was my GPU not being able to handle the game, but I noticed it happened reliably in the same exact places. Here, take a look at the chart in the upper left hand corner. Notice the massive spikes in frame time? That's essentially a visual representation of when the game hangs or hitches. I'm sure you guys can see this happening in the video itself, but I want to promise you when the controls are in your hands, it feels nasty when this goes down. And like I alluded to in the gameplay section, I blame Dead Space's seamless nature here as I imagine their loading and deloading locations and assets every time Isaac passes a certain point. Here in this room, every time I get to the other corner, I can reliably trigger a frame time spike. I also wanted to make sure this wasn't a performance thing, so I dropped down to 1440p and I was able to replicate all the same exact stutters in all the same exact places. I didn't try 1080p, but that's because higher end cards are sort of famously bad at scaling lower resolution performance. I even took it a step further by comparing low settings to high and DLSS on versus off. The stuttering is persistent no matter what resolution you play at or what settings you use. It really sucks because just as I was able to dial in a solid average frame rate, I started encountering these hitches and it just really ruins the smooth feeling the game can have otherwise. I really can't explain it physically, but try doing this to replicate it. For the next few minutes, just pause and immediately unpause this video at random intervals. It feels gross and it shines a disappointing light, especially when you consider just how well the original game ran, even on mid-level hardware of its day. All the stuff I just listed sort of hangs over this game's presentation like a dark cloud, which sucks because it genuinely is an incredible looking showcase for modern graphics. I think a lot of the performance issues could be solved with a little more efficient design, but out of everything, I would say it's the near constant stutter that brings things down the most. I mean, I can learn to deal with the weird ghosting due to DLSS, but the ever-present hitch that has the game just locking up for a brief second gets in the way of the amazingly immersive visuals and overall gameplay experience. But all that being said, as far as I'm concerned, what we've got here is an amazing looking game that definitely requires a little too much resources in order to achieve that look. Now personally, I would say the gameplay and stylish graphics were worth the resistance I ran into, but if you said that wasn't the case for you, I would totally understand why. Honestly, it sucks having to end this section on such a bummer of a note because the rest of Dead Space has left me slack-jawed with how much it exceeded my expectations. I do hope that with time, future patches could help fix or at least mitigate the frame spikes here, but unlike modern game developers, I can't exactly base my work on non-existent benchmarks, so here we are. <sighs> okay, that was a bit of an emotional roller coaster. You know, in the end, I was blown away with just how much reverence Motive showed for the original Dead Space in this remake. I mean, this really is the new bar that other remakes are going to have to clear moving forward. Everything you could have possibly loved about OG Dead Space is present and accounted for here and is surrounded by a few new tricks that go beyond just modernizing the experience and dip straight up into improving it. As you guys know, I am a man who appreciates accuracy in these types of releases and even if it's just once, it is nice to be tailored to. Apart from some real issues I had on the performance end of things, I'll say this was an absolute joy of a video game to finish, and to be fair, I don't think the stuttering or graphical roadblocks would have bothered me so much if they weren't taking place in such an otherwise incredible game. Whether or not this is a barrier to entry far too high is going to be up to you, but as far as I'm concerned, this is still a game well worth getting your hands on. I had an absolute blast with Dead Space, and at a few different spots I just had to stop and marvel how much more fun I was having compared to the OG release, which, might I remind you, was an amazing video game. And listen, I can't exactly excuse the performance or stuttering, those are all still very bad things, but I can say this. Buying Dead Space sends a message to the industry, and that message is Final Fantasy VII Remake is no longer the only path forward for games like this. You can absolutely remake a title without turning it into a ghost of its former self. It lets them know that there are people out there who want the original games they fell in love with but would like a visual package that represents the progress made in tech since the original title released, and maybe a few extra bells and whistles in terms of balance or ease of use. It's really such an easy concept, but for whatever reason, it seems to escape producers who think that games that don't resemble current moneymakers flat out won't make a return on investment. 
and that's in bold-faced defiance of certain industry facts. Like, for example, did you know the remake of Resident Evil 1 has to date outsold every single release and re-release of OG RE1 on every platform it ever appeared on? Look, the point is, we're out here. We want accurate remakes, and I'm glad to say it's what we seem to be getting lately. So on that happy note, I've got to get back to work. I've got some killer projects coming concerning modern survival horror games I think you guys are going to love. So here's hoping I see all of you again next time, or hell, that there even is a next time, here on the Dead Space Retrospective. Well hey there guys, big thanks for coming by. If you want more in-depth reviews like this, I do have a Patreon where you can directly support me and the YouTube Partner Program should be located on some kind of button, I don't know, somewhere around here. Both of those avenues do a lot to make sure I can keep making the videos I want to and hopefully the ones you want to see, but if you're not in that kind of financial situation, no problem at all. A quick like, subscribe, comment, or share does this channel a world of good. I really and truly do not deserve the absolute kindness you guys have shown me since I started this little hobby and my only hope is to one day live up to all that generosity. Much love to all of you and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out friends.